All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Um, so, um, in this presentation, I would like to talk about decentralized knowledge graphs, uh, which are knowledge, knowledge graphs that, that come to be thanks to initiatives such as uh, SOLID, which was uh, introduced in the presentation before, but also approaches such as uh, Mastodon and, and Blue Sky, which are uh, alternative decentralization approaches. Now, what is typical of these uh, decentralized knowledge graphs is obviously that there's a clear lack of centralized index. Uh, and that they spread data over a massive number of, uh, of data sources. Uh, and finally, that there's also an element of, uh, of permission data in there because of, uh, of uh, privacy. Um, now, um, obviously, the, there are a lot of advantages for, for end users uh, for having these decentralized knowledge graphs because users are in control over their own data, can choose how to store it, where to store it, and so on. So that's great for the end user. But on the other hand, um, it leads to some difficulties for, for developers that want to create applications on top of these decentralized knowledge graphs. Uh, so on this slide, you can you can see a couple of these challenges, such as, uh, for example, the, the the task of discovering data. So how, how can I find data where it is located is a lot more uh, difficult because it's not located in, in one centralized place anymore. Uh, since you have a lot of um, different sources at which your data could be located, um, some, some tasks may also require combining data from across different data sources. And then finally, there's also an element of, um, like in order to, to, uh, to tackle this element of, of permission data, we also need to do all of this in a privacy-preserving manner. Now, um, in order to hide away complexities for application developers that want to uh, read or write uh, to these decentralized knowledge graphs, there is a need for an abstraction layer that abstracts away um, these, these difficulties. Um, yeah, so essentially we need, we need something that sits in between applications on the one hand and decentralized knowledge graphs on the other hand so that the application developer um, yeah, has, a, has an easier job of, of interacting with, with these decentralized knowledge graphs. Um, so the focus of this presentation will be on, on investigating how query engines can, can take up uh, this role. And uh, so essentially, how can query engines abstract access to decentralized knowledge graphs? So this presentation will be split up into three main parts. Uh, first, we'll have a look at, uh, at SOLID, but this will be quite short since you all had a, a nice introduction to SOLID already. Um, then uh, we'll have a look at uh, eight different requirements that we identified for uh, query engines that want to query over such decentralized knowledge graphs. And then finally, we'll have a look at the state of the art. So we'll have a look at three existing approaches uh, specific to SOLID um, that can already do part of this and, and we'll see how, how they meet these requirements already and what the challenges are for future work. Um, so the focus of this presentation will be will be on solid, uh, but many of the of the concepts discussed here are also applicable to other uh, decentralization initiatives. Um, so yeah, I, I won't go into detail on solid, but I want to um, recap um, one fundamental concept of, of solid because because this is quite crucial, and that's the concept of of these personal data pods. Where, uh, where users can store any kind of data uh, in it that they want. So users are in full control over where their pod is stored and who can uh, access uh, what parts of data in it. Uh, so pods can store any kind of data that they want, uh, such as personal data, such as phone number, email address, um, and so on, but also other types of data, su such as pictures, uh, but data can also link to, to other types of data or, or data in other pods, such as uh, like my, my profile can, for example, contain a list of links to all of the people that I know or my friends, which are then links to, to other pods. So essentially, um, all of this uh, leads to a massive decentralization of data, not within just a single pod, but also across multiple pods. 
So um, let's now have a look at um, eight different requirements uh, that we identified for, for engines that want to query over decentralized knowledge graphs. And in the next couple of slides, we'll, uh, we'll go over, over them in a bit more detail. So this bar here is quite annoying since you can see only part of the title. So I'll see if I can... Oops, now it's completely broken. I'll just see if I can exit full screen. Maybe I'll do it like that, so you can at least see the title. Um, all right, so our first requirement is obviously the ability to, to execute uh, queries. Um, so for this, we need a query engine that is sufficiently uh, expressive, such as, for example, the Sparkle query language uh, is very expressive. So we need a, a very expressive query language because we want application developers to um, yeah, to, to, to express a wide range of, uh, of, uh, of data retrieval or update tasks that they might uh, want to do in applications. Secondly, we also want these languages to be declarative so that, they, so that the application developer only needs to express what kind of data is needed, but not, not necessarily how the data needs to be obtained because that's the job of, of the query engine. Uh, so yeah, here on this slide you can see a simple example of such a, a query where we want to, uh, to find all of the posts created by, by a certain uh, person. Now, um, a second requirement is related to discovery of data within pods, where we, um, well, what I mentioned before is that so you, a user can choose uh, how to store uh, data in their pod. Um, so this data is not necessarily contained within a single file, but it can be spread over multiple files. Um, so you can have some files for, for different posts that, uh, that the user has made. You can make some files for, for comments that this user has made, some different files for pictures and so on. Um, so in essence, uh, a pod looks like a collection of a lot, a lot of different documents. Um, so we need query engines that are able to, to find uh, or to discover the existence of all of these different files and then also uh, look inside of these files to query over the contents, contents of these uh, files. Then our next requirement is very related to this one. This is related to, the uh, to not the discovery of data within pods, but across pods. So since we may have queries that do not only target a single pod, um, but may target multiple pods, uh, we need query engines that also are capable of jumping over to other pods that are relevant for the query. Uh, think, for example, of, of use cases where you want the, uh, where you have a, a social networking use case where you want to visualize all of the posts that, uh, that the user has made and maybe also want to visualize all of the comments created by other people on that, uh, on that post. So in that case, the post might exist in, in one pod, but the comments made by other people on that post might be located in other pods. So then a query engine needs to discover the existence of, of these different uh, pods that uh, contain the comments and then uh, follow links between those pods. Then our next requirement is related to um, handling uh, location heterogeneity. So what do I mean by this? Um, so as you can see in, in this figure here, you can see an illustration of how Bob decides to uh, organize his, uh, his pictures that he, uh, that he wants to store in his pod. So on this slide, you can see that he stores the, his pictures organized by the location in which each picture was taken. Now, it's up to Bob to choose how, how he does this. Uh, but someone else, like Alice, for example, might want to store her data in a slightly different way. Maybe Alice doesn't want to organize her pictures by location, but maybe by the year in which each picture was taken. Um, so her bot will look quite a bit different than, than Bob's uh, bot. So since each bot can look quite different, even, even though the same kind of data is stored in there, 
uh, query engines uh, must not make any assumptions about where certain data is located uh, in each pod. So each pod should be should be yeah interpreted as as possibly having a, a different uh, hierarchical structure. Now our next requirement is another form of heterogeneity, but in this case schema heterogeneity. Um, so since uh, Solid makes use of, uh, of linked data and RDF, you can have um, different kinds of uh, vocabularies or ontologies or schemas, however you want to call them. Um, different schemas that represent uh, similar data, but yeah, represented in using a uh, different schema. So um, for example, um, Bob may, for example, want to decide to store his personal data uh, and express it using the schema.org vocabulary. Uh, but Alice, for example, may want to store her personal data not using schema.org, but using the FOV ontology. Um, even though the, the, the underlying data is, is, is very similar, the, the schemas are different. So if you want to query over the combination of these personal data, um, you need uh, a query engine that is aware of these differences and aware that these schemas can actually be aligned together. So, um, yeah, this is another requirement that we have for query engines. And then our next requirement is another form of heterogeneity, but this time API heterogeneity. So, at the moment, um, all solid pods use a so-called uh, document-oriented interface, which means that, um, yeah, Solid pods or the data within solid pods is exposed using documents, link data, link data documents. But within the solid community, there are um, calls for also exposing alternative kinds of uh, interfaces or APIs. Um, how these interfaces will be, uh, or how these APIs will look like, is not um, determined yet. Um, but we may very well see uh, APIs such as uh, the ones listed in this figure here popping up in solid, such as a, a triple pattern fragments interface, a, a Sparkle endpoint perhaps even. Um, so in the future, we might see bots being ex exposed through different kinds of APIs, so not just this document-oriented interface anymore. So for this, we need our query engines to be able to discover the existence uh, of, of these APIs and then adapt the, the query execution process to make use of the capabilities of the, these APIs as efficient as possible. Then uh, requirement number seven uh, is related to authentication uh, because obviously in solid not all of the data is public so we need our query engines to, to take this into account. So what we might uh, see in the future is, for example, the ability for the user to log in to the query engine somehow and then have the query engine um, request data on behalf of the user so that the query engine can see all of the data that the user has access to. Then our final requirement um, is sort of a uh, yeah, non-functional requirement. This is related to user-perceived performance. So, if we want to be able to develop application, decentralized applications that users really want to use, uh, these applications will have to have a good user experience. So for that, we need query engines to be sufficiently fast. So concretely, this means that they need to be able to produce results as soon as possible. And ideally, these uh, results need to ar arrive earlier than the, the well-known response limits that uh, people have, um, where, for example, everything that that uh, after an action, everything that that occurs after 0.1 seconds feels as an as an instant action. Uh, everything below one second, yeah, the user might feel as if it takes a while, but it's it's still sufficiently fast to to feel like a seamless flow. But everything above 10 seconds is really way too slow for for the users to to keep attention. So yeah, we need we need our query engines to produce results uh, adhering to these uh, well-known response time limits. 
but luckily there are some tricks we can we can use to uh, to help here uh, because in yeah a query engine does not necessarily need to produce the whole set of results within these limits. Like the query engine may even be able to uh, to produce parcel or approximate results um, as soon as possible. So maybe uh, after 0.1 seconds, so that the user already sees something, even though the total set of results is not present yet. This might help, for example, in applications where we have a scroll bar, where you don't necessarily. Uh, where the user does not necessarily want to uh, have it visualized, all of the possible results, but maybe the first five results or something can already be shown, even though the other results are still being computed in the background by the query engine. So, um, these were all of our requirements. So, let's now have a look at... Um, at three different approaches that already exist and how they meet these requirements. So first approach, um, this is from, from our team uh, at Ghent University, uh, where we investigated a so-called link traversal uh, query processing approach dedicated for solid, where the idea is that we have a query engine that uh, starts from, from essentially zero knowledge um, and discover in, discovers information on the fly. So you basically just give a, a Sparkle query to the query engine and the query engine will figure out where the data uh, needs to be found and how to, um, uh, um, it basically follows links between documents, either documents within one pod or documents uh, within uh, other pods. Um, so on the next slide here, you can see an example of, of how this works, um, where you have a, a simple Sparkle query. Um, the screen is a bit messed up. Let me refresh. This looks a bit better. Uh, where you have a Sparkle query here. Uh, in this case, we want to find all of the posts created by a single person, and the single person here is identified by a by his web ID. So if we execute this query, uh, there are two things I want to I want you to pay attention to. The first is uh, results uh, come in incrementally. So this is important for this uh, this last requirement we have. So the, this user perceived performance, where we want some results to arrive as, as soon as possible. But you'll also notice that it still takes a while. So we're not there yet, uh, performance wise. And what I also want you to keep attention to is on the bottom here, you will see a, uh, a log of, of all of the different uh, HTTP requests that are being done. So these are all of the links that the query engine follows during query execution. So let's execute the query. If I click the right button, there we go. So you'll see there we already have the results. It went quicker than expected, so the Wi-Fi is better than I uh, assumed. But here in the background, you'll see that the engine did a bunch of HTTP requests uh, to all of the different files within, yeah, within this pod here. Um, so yeah, this was uh, a first approach. Uh, the second approach is the espresso approach, which was uh, as, uh, explained in detail before this presentation here. So I'll, uh, I won't go into further depth on this one. Uh, and then a final approach I want to mention is the, the bot query approach, uh, where the idea is that um, a single uh, query agent, so a single query engine, is placed on top of a single pod, so that you can, can basically do full Sparkle querying over this single pod. But this is restricted yeah, to, to cases where you only want to query over, over data in a single pod. Um, now, if we look at, uh, at how the different requirements that we identified are met by these different approaches, we see quite a bit of check marks, so that's a good thing, but we also see that none of the approaches uh, meet all of the requirements. Um, so we still have, have some work to do. Um, so we see some challenges for future work. Um, 
Uh, first one is, is related to the, the requirement of uh, heterogeneity of schema across pods, because we see that none of the existing approaches uh, meet these, uh, meets this requirement. So for this, we need future work in the direction of, of either server-side or client-side schema alignment through reasoning approaches. Um, a second challenge is related to our requirement of heterogeneity of APIs. Uh, none of the existing approaches uh, meet uh, this requirement either. Um, so yeah, for this, we need to work in the direction of, of discovering bot capabilities and then uh, somehow using these capabilities in an efficient way during query planning. And then, yeah, our final challenge is related to, uh, to performance, uh, especially if we, if we do cross-bot queries. So we really need uh, better performance there. Some directions that, that can help there are uh, uh, specifically, uh, for example, client-side optimization, such as uh, prioritizing which links need to be followed before other links. Better query planning approaches can also help. Uh, but also servers can help uh, by, for example, uh, exposing summaries across pods. Like, for example, if you have a, uh, a, uh, a complex query that a client wants to execute, but maybe someone else already did a similar, or, or a similar query or maybe part of the query beforehand and maybe publishes those results somewhere, then the, the engine could reuse part of, of those results already if the, if the query is sufficiently uh, similar. Um, so yeah, these are, are some uh, challenges for future work. So this was pretty much everything I wanted to talk about. So let me just conclude in my final slide. So what we wanted to do is hide away the complexities uh, for interacting with decentralized knowledge graphs. And the focus of this presentation was to figure out how query engines can meet these requirements. Um, and for this, we, we identified eight different requirements and we uh, saw that not all of the approaches uh, currently existing meet all of these requirements. We, we saw some check marks, but uh, not everything was checked. Uh, mainly, for example, the schema, schema and API heterogeneity uh, needs more work in the future uh, and we need more work regarding performance improvements. Thanks all.